Morris Bucker has been a mentor from day one. God bless you for all you do. Obviously, he's going to Washington. I want to work with Lori to make the changes he promised. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. So a year ago when we started this campaign, I started traveling. And I've been all around the Commonwealth, but I got an opportunity to go to all the four corners multiple times. And the most important thing a doctor does is to listen. Even surgeons, by the way, which is what I do, you know, you think we heal with steel, and we do operate, obviously, and use scalpels, but it's our listening that makes us effective because people will actually tell us what's going on in their lives, and then we can do a better job helping you. So the first thing I started to focus on was to listen to people. And as you travel around Pennsylvania, you get pretty optimistic because folks know exactly what they want to do. They don't want government in their way. They're, sometimes there are crises. You've got to get involved. But generally speaking, you want to live your own lives. You want to have agency over your future. And as I would speak to people, they start to share deeper concerns that they'd have. Like seniors would often say that they didn't think their Social Security checks could stretch far enough with 40-year high inflation eating away at them. And young couples, remember when you're young and you're just about to make that first payment, the down payment on your, your home? They couldn't do it because interest rates were rocketing up and they just couldn't make it happen. And then families, and this is the part that would hurt me the most, would say they were buying their kids video games to keep them indoors because they didn't think they were safe outside. I mean, the best thing my parents ever told me was go outside and play till it got dark, right? In Lancaster County, we know that. It's fine. you got a lot of place to play. You can't do that right now in some parts of the Commonwealth. And then the worst part of it all was parents would say they were worried about their mailboxes because on social media, you can buy drugs with fentanyl that's been laced into them that's lethal. And I'd actually hear stories in almost every big gathering about how families had been changed. It doesn't have to be that way. We control what we do next. And we have the opportunity in six days to send a very clear message about what we want and to put people in position to deliver on that promise to you. Now, I'm not a politician, which I'm happy about. I'm a surgeon. And you know what surgeons do? We focus on something really important, in my case, the heart, which is pretty critical, <laughs> and you unite to fix it. You don't divide people because you're not going to be able to work as effectively. You make sure you all get along because you've got a bigger goal in mind. I want to go to Washington and bring balance. Stop the partisan bickering and deal with the problems that you guys have been telling me about for the last year plus. That's what I pledge to do. And there's so much that can make that happen. Now, in contrast, John Fetterman seems to take the extreme position on so many items. Now, I'm not going to go through all of his spots. You've so I'm sure heard them and can recount them better than I can. But I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do about these issues. Because there are three topics, three topics that I have spent my campaign dwelling on. They're the kitchen table issues that every family in Pennsylvania is talking about. And when you go out from here and tell your friends, because I'm going to ask you all to tell, talk to ten people about what you've heard here tonight, these are the three topics that you should be focused on. The first is the economy. Now, here's the difference between this, this economy and ones that we've had in the past. Ours are self-inflicted wounds. We know how to fix the problem, right? And we can talk about spending and taxes, but I got to say, right here in Pennsylvania, we got part of the solution. Right beneath our feet, we can unleash energy in Pennsylvania. And, and the beauty of that is that you can drop inflation because... Energy prices drive about a third of it. We can help our allies overseas. There's going to be $10 a gallon gas in Europe this winter. A cold, cold winter in Europe. It's going to be over $5 here, I bet. It's already, I just driving out, it was over $4 an hour in a lot of the pumps. It's been a significant increase in the last month. It doesn't have to be that way, and we have the opportunity to make sure it doesn't happen again. But it also hurts communities when you don't let them do what they can do. It hurts manufacturing. All of this which would allow Pennsylvania to function at full speed, is ours to offer. Second big issue is crime. And here is, to me, a matter of letting people do their job. Now, when I got the endorsement of the Fraternal Order of Police, <laughs> one of the greatest honors for me, it was unanimous. They are so upset 
that they're not allowed to do what they signed up to do. I was up at Erie, and a, and a woman, probably uh, youthful-looking 50-year-old woman, was very emotional and asked, what's wrong? She said, my, my son's a cop. And I said, well, thank him for serving. I know that can be very uh, trying on a mom to think he's in danger all the time. She said, my problem is not that my son's in danger. He signed up for it. I understand what he desires to do. What hurts me is that my son risks his life and people disrespect him for it. That's why cops are leaving. We can't hire new ones. Let cops do their job, make prosecutors do their jobs, and we as candidates have to answer questions, which is something we have an obligation to do from voters, from the press, and from each other, which is why it was so important that we would have a debate and make sure that we could ask hard questions of each other so people can defend their positions. And when I kept pestering and pushing and nudging John Fetterman to answer for his radical positions, he had trouble because these are difficult to explain in a time when so many Pennsylvanians are having their lives turned upside down. Cities like Philadelphia, the highest homicide rates ever. And areas like Lancaster, which are relatively preserved, are still suffering from, co from deaths from fentanyl that are unheard of. You know, the state troopers who also endorsed me told me that in the last quarter, they've confiscated seven times more fentanyl than two years ago. There was enough fentanyl taken at the border, confiscated at the border, to have killed every American alive last month. And again, it doesn't have to be that way. So in the Senate, I would pledge, because this is my obligation to you, you all do what you're supposed to do as citizens like I do. The federal government has an obligation, a covenant, to secure our borders. And by doing that, by securing the border, we also shut down the cartels that are functioning like well, they're human trafficking operations that are gargantuan, taking the profit, buying narcotics, fentanyl from China, and then running those drugs into America, making every state a border state. And Pennsylvania is top five in the country in fentanyl overdose death rates. No one's spared. But these terrorist organiz organizations will be shut down if we put our mind to it, which I pledge to do. So let me leave you with a couple ideas. We've got to have less extremism, more balance in Washington. It's what's going to allow us to cope with the challenges that this country faces. But you've also heard that my parents were immigrants, and they proudly came here, and I did live the American dream, an, an embodiment of it, because I believe that we have opportunities unparalleled in this nation. For us to continue to be that beacon of hope for the world, let's deal with the things right in front of our eyes here to ensure they don't affect the nation that we need to be, the ability for us to prosper. So let me leave you with two points. One is a request. And one is a argument that you, a closing argument you want you to make with those folks you talk to, the 10 people you're going to speak to. All right, first the request. I played football in college. And the last words you'd hear as you ran out in the field, what we heard here just a few minutes ago, the national anthem. Wasn't it a beautiful rendition, by the way? Yeah. Now, it's fascinating to me. Because when I was a young man, I listened to this national anthem, and I think, well, freedom's the message, right? We're going to be free. But the last word of the national anthem is not freedom, it's bravery, right? Home of the brave. Because you can't be free if you're not brave. So what we have to do is say what we see. Now, it sounds so straightforward, doesn't it? But you can get canceled today for saying what you're seeing. You can get in the hot water. Even if you passionately believe something and say it with love in your heart, you can still be chastised and criticized. But if we all say it together, then at least we're honest with each other. And that's what we owe Americans. That's what we owe each other, to make sure they know what we really think. And we understand and listen, by the way, to what they think. So you can find out where the middle ground is. And the reason Pennsylvania is so important is we're perfectly purple, right? Our neighbors are Democrats. And we're going to win this election because we're going to get those neighbors, conservative Democrats in particular, independents, to vote with us. Because they don't like what's happening to the country. Which brings me to point number two. You're going to ask your friends whether they're happy with where America's headed. Now, if they say yes, take their car keys away. Because <laughs> they really shouldn't be driving in that condition. But 70%, more than two out of three, are going to say, no, I'm worried about a country that we all deeply love. And you are too. That's why you're here. In that case, I want you to tell them, assure them, that I'm the candidate for change. That's what I stand for. 
I believe we're a land of opportunity. We still are the land of plenty. I believe we can balance our budget and not reckless suspend our children's money. I believe that we can be an all of the above energy state and sh shine that light so that others can follow it with us. It's the best way to protect our environment, but it also address so many other crises that our nation faces. We're blessed with it. Let's use it thoughtfully while preserving and making sure it's done cleanly. I believe that we can have safe city streets. I believe we can ensure that our border is secure, but we allow legal immigration, like how my parents came here, so we have workers for our farms and we have skilled laborers. I also believe parents should have the choice of where their kids go to school, especially if the kids are at risk. And I believe we should have affordable health care. But most importantly, most importantly, I believe in you. And I know that working together, we can get this done. It is what has always allowed America to thrive. It's what still will allow us to succeed. And on the 8th of November, in five short days, that's exactly the message we're going to deliver to the country. God bless you all. Thank you very much.